An anti-panhandling lawsuit will remain in effect after a federal judge refused to issue an emergency injunction. To learn why, we're joined by Charlie McGee. He's a poverty reporter for the online investigative newsroom, The Tributary. Charlie, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So remind us how we got to this point. So this is, uh, the impetus is basically a lawsuit that was filed in February uh, by an organization called the Kozak Foundation uh, in regard to an ordinance that the city of Jacksonville passed uh, early last year. Uh, This is, it's been dubbed essentially a panhandling ban. Um, But what it does is it outlaws various forms of solicitation uh, along what the city calls designated roadways, aka the busiest roadways uh, in Jacksonville. Uh, It represents a little less than half of all roadways in Jacksonville, but we know how big Jacksonville is and there's a lot of rural areas. And so these sort of vast, uh, empty kind of roads are exempt, but the most uh, high traffic areas Uh, The ordinance essentially says that nobody is allowed to solicit donations, uh, solicit a ride, any kind of solicitation. And the sort of underlying target was panhandling, you know, people who are homeless or maybe just claim to be homeless, uh, asking for money, holding signs uh, on medians uh, in the middle of the road or alongside uh, the side of roads. Um, It makes that basically a punishable offense. Uh, and the Kozak Foundation argues in this lawsuit that this ordinance is a violation of the First Amendment. Uh, and the reason that they argue this is that they are not panhandlers, but they distribute uh, a free newspaper throughout Florida called The Homeless Voice. Um, and the people who produce and distribute the paper are homeless Floridians. Uh, and the they go up to motorists who are parked at traffic lights, offer them the paper for free and say, donate whatever you can if you want. Um, What's unique about this law is, I mean, it uh, it penalizes panhandling, but it also penalizes motorists if they give a donation or if they even give someone a bottle of water. That's right. Yeah. There's a couple different elements within the ordinance. And one of them is, yeah, prohibition on basically any physical interaction between uh, a motorist or driver of a car uh, and the person who is soliciting. And so uh, yeah, that's one of the punishable offenses and it applies to the driver. And so the fact that the newspaper that they publish is at the center of this is the grounds for why this is being presented as a First Amendment violation? That's right. They're basically arguing that, hey, you might say that, you know, panhandling is is the only activity targeted here, but This also covers us. They say that they're uh, distributors of the newspaper, who the solicitors of the newspaper who've done this in Jacksonville for years, uh, have been threatened with arrest multiple times in the last year since the ordinance was passed. And so they've essentially shuttered their distribution of the homeless voice in Jacksonville. And I think we saw some numbers from our news partners over at Channel 4 in terms of the number of people that have been um, charged or arrested They found that 69 people have been arrested, that the police have issued 670 warnings and 36 citations. So it is being enforced. Um, This case was in court a week ago in federal court for a a hearing on an injunction request. You were there. Remind us what happened and what the outcome was. Yeah. So the uh, injunction hearing, this was regarding a request or a motion that the Kozak Foundation had made in the case to basically say, uh, look, we might go into litigation, uh, you know, this might go to a trial, uh, whether it be a jury trial or something. And in the meantime, while all that goes on, we're asking you, the judge, to uh, bar Jacksonville from enforcing this ordinance, at least temporarily. And then when the case is resolved, what they're hoping is the ordinance will be scrapped permanently. And so they're saying, in the meantime, stop Jacksonville from enforcing this. And the judge didn't rule uh, at the end of the hearing that sometimes a judge will rule from the bench. But uh, in this case, he took some more time to consider it and ultimately decided that he's not going to uh, grant the preliminary injunction. So Jacksonville still is and uh, is allowed to enforce this ordinance while it fights this lawsuit. The threshold for an injunction in a case like this is pretty high. It is pretty high. He basically said in his order that, you know, this is not an indicator of how I'm going to rule in the case basically broke it down to the the court record at this point is too narrow to decide uh, for him to say affirmatively that uh, the plaintiffs, the Kozak Foundation, are likely to win. And that's sort of a high bar is if the judge says, 
you know, the merits of this case are so great that it seems like the city's going to lose. That would be what would would be needed uh, for him to have granted this injunction. So the uh, city is being defended in this lawsuit by the Office of General Counsel, which is the attorney for the entire city, including the city council. But they weren't always enthusiastic about this bill before it passed. So they're in kind of an unusual posture. Yeah, it, I mean, it was a debatable, uh, it was a debated policy. There is, you know, even when it was passed, uh, there were sort of city leaders who uh, you know, were, you know, uh, people involved in the community and a few council members who were critical of it, basically saying uh, this is a little too punitive of a law. It is outlawing, you know, people who may be desperate for money and, and need it to survive, um, you know, barring them from uh even the possibility of uh, getting those kinds of donations from people in a major area. And so it's a controversial policy, but the city's standing by it uh, in court now. There are other similar laws around the country, um, a lot of them being challenged on similar grounds. So is there any consensus in terms of, you know, legal minds? Is this all heading back to the U.S. Supreme Court ultimately? I, you know, it's hard to say. It seems possible, though, uh, and we've seen the Supreme Court consider uh, similar types of ordinances. Actually, one of the uh, cases uh, that that applies to, uh, I've cited in my reporting, is a case called Papa Cristo versus the city of Jacksonville. This was in the 1970s, and it was a different kind of law. It outlawed things like vagrancy, vagrancy and, uh, you know, sort of just broadly throughout the city of Jacksonville in the 70s, and that went to the Supreme Court. Uh, it was struck down as unconstitutionally vague, uh, is what they say. And so um, it's hard to say that there's a consensus. You know, both the city and the plaintiffs in their filings have cited uh, different court cases and precedents that sort of support their each of their arguments. And so it's possible, you know, that's kind of one of the main reasons the Supreme Court exists, is to sort of give the final judgment on this kind of thing. And if this would be the case or not, that goes, I, who knows, but it uh, would be interesting if that did happen. So this law applies, as you were saying, to kind of major arterial roads throughout the city of Jacksonville. But some people will remember, like, uh, isn't it already illegal? I mean, the city did pass a panhandling ban um, 20 years ago or so. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that was it, it's interesting because this was a sort of debate in a couple of years leading up to this most this 2023 ordinance that's now being challenged is uh, there were some you know, complaints uh, throughout the city that there was a rise in panhandling, specifically uh, sort of children being used to panhandle at these roadway areas. And uh, the whole concern was public safety, right? And that's the city's argument is that you know, we're not looking to restrict uh, the First Amendment or overstep for free speech rights. We're just trying to protect public safety. And uh, the law that you're talking about, you know, it's still on the books as far as uh, I can tell. But uh the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office had said um, in 2022, they told uh, Action News Jax that um, the that basically past court rulings had ruled that panhandling is protected by the First Amendment. And so that had sort of watered down their ability to actually enforce that old ordinance. Uh, so it's another interesting element. It, it, it'll be interesting to see if that factors into the case of, well, you already have this existing law that sort of says the same thing in many ways. So the current law that's being challenged, as you said, is predicated on the idea of public safety. And so the city came with some numbers trying to indicate that that there has been some measurable decline in, in traffic incidents. Yeah, that was uh, one point that came up at the uh, preliminary injunction hearing uh, was, uh, you know, the city, they couldn't say affirmatively, uh, you know, that, hey, since this ordinance has passed, we've seen this reduction in uh, pedestrian on vehicle accidents, which happen at a high rate in the city of Jacksonville, apparently. That was one of the arguments for passing the ordinance. Um, but they said, you know, we have indicators that uh, there have been reductions uh, in the time since. But the judge challenged that point, basically said, do you have any evidence that this ordinance or the reduction in panhandling has anything to do with reduced uh, pedestrian on vehicle accidents? Uh, and that is another one of the arguments the plaintiffs are making is until the city proves that people panhandling around roads has anything to do with these high rates of these kinds of accidents in Jacksonville, um, this is an overstep. Uh, it's sort of too much of an assumption for the city to just say, well, let's ban panhandling, uh, even though we haven't provided evidence that it has 
And we should say there is a, a provision that allows for permits in some cases, um, but it's a fairly high uh, threshold of what is required of somebody seeking the permit. Yes, there's a criteria. They, they call it, I believe, a charitable solicitation permit, uh, which would allow you under various guidelines and, and restrictions to do certain kinds of solicitation in these uh, high traffic areas of the roads. Um, but as you say, you know, you'd have to get a permit from the city. Uh, you can only have said permit for up to six days per year maximum to, to do that. And you'd be prohibited from that every other day of the year. And uh, some of the criteria that, you know, has come up uh, that's been challenged the most by the plaintiffs is you have to provide the city proof that you have uh, at least one million dollars in general uh, liability insurance coverage, um, which, you know, the the. Kozak Foundation argues, you know, we, we don't have the financial resources to do I mean, that. Most people panhandling probably can't. It doesn't. Yeah, that seems like a pretty high bar for someone who's asking for money on the side of the road in the first place. Uh, and they, you know, there's a, an exemption to that requirement, which says if you have been deemed indigent, uh, which is basically a term, you know, that you're completely destitute, unable to afford, uh, it, it would just be out of the question that you could have a million dollars in insurance coverage. Uh, but the Kozak Foundation argues is, well, we're not a human being. We are a nonprofit, so we aren't capable of being deemed indigent. indigent. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah. Well, Charlie McGee, thank you so much for sharing your reporting on this. We'll continue to follow this, and we hope you come back. Absolutely. Thank you. Check out the tributary to uh, get follow-up. Coverage. Absolutely. Check out the tributary any day. Yes. Yeah. All right.